Hi guys, uh, so welcome to the fourth video of this Java multi-threading playlist. So I hope all these three videos were helpful for you to understand the basic concept of thread creation, Java memory model, understanding race conditions, atomic volatile, synchronized keywords. And in the third video, we discuss thread local and inheritable thread local in Java multi-threading. So this fourth video is all about Java virtual threads, right? So before jumping to this uh, theoretical thing, we will just see how we can create virtual thread how it is different from platform threads and how many virtual threads we can create okay so i'm planning to create around 10 million virtual threads but let's see if i will be able to create that or not so here i have just written like number of threads first we will start creating platform threads uh, so we know in comparison like after how many threads creation the platform threads will give us error and then we will start with the virtual threads so I'm just creating here simple runnable object that we saw in the first video of this playlist. So here I'm simulating some API call, but in real, in your production code, you would have some code like this by using HTTP client, and then you are giving some API URL. So in this program, you will be hitting million of times. So it was giving me the request limit maximum reach out error because they're not allow allowing me to hit that many requests within a seconds. So that's why I'm just simulating some of these here inside the object runnable run method. And here I'm starting some for loop and inside this, this is a platform thread. So whenever you create a platform thread, it will be tied to your operating system level. So it will have some CPU capacity and memory it depends on a CPU capacity and memory. And if you try to create beyond some limit of CPU, it will give you some error like uh, maximum limit reached because every thread will also have large thread stack and other resources to manage and here i'm just setting the name i'm setting to daemon true and after that i'm joining all the threads here to see whether all the requests are getting completed or not okay so i will run this with 10000 number of threads but threads are platform threads so if i run this so let's see if 10000 platform threads are uh, supported by my cpu machine okay so here if you see right after 9182 threads so approximately 9000 uh, platform threads it start giving me error out of memory so that means uh, my operating system doesn't have that much capacity like it can create beyond this number so let's now try creating the virtual thread so i will change the syntax here so i will say thread dot of virtual dot unstarted then i will pass the runnable here okay and i will just comment this daemon true because by default all the virtual threads will be daemon and i am just using start method here and but you can also directly start here also so there are different ways to start the virtual thread so so same code everything else is same so i just changed uh, this platform thread to virtual thread so if you see if i will run this now so it should not give me error and it will run all fine right so if you see everything works well all the threads were created uh, and all the process finished right so let's now increase our number to 1 million okay we'll run this program again so let's see so if you see till now there is no error everything is working fine so it's almost reached to 700k 800k and then it almost reached to 700k and the data is getting fetched and if you see uh, this is our 1 millionth thread which got completed so within some seconds uh, right uh, i was able to play with 1 million threads and i believe like if we give 10 million also so let's try so i will give 10 million here so if i run this also it will work well because it's really lightweight and it is not using much of the operating system resources it is running at the jvm level so if you see now it might take some time because uh, 10 million is a huge number but what i'm trying to show here is it's still working it is not saying that like that uh, it will give you error so if you see it's still working and i think it will get completed also so so till it is working right uh, because 10 million will take some time but it's almost reached up to 3 million so till then let's see some theoretical information of virtual threads and if i go to this oracle documentation so you will see why use virtual threads right uh, so 
we only have to use virtual threads where you have great number of concurrent tasks that spend much of their time waiting. So this is the really important fact when using virtual thread where you are waiting for database operation, waiting for the file thing, waiting for the API call. In that case, virtual threads should be your solution in your code. Be clear that virtual threads are not faster threads. So they do not run code faster than platform thread. So they the only purpose of them is to provide scale, not speed. Okay, so it's not for speed, it's for scaling higher throughput of your application. So that you should always remember. And if you see here, the single JVM can support millions of virtual threads. So we saw now we were able to run 10 millions, maybe if we increase to 20 millions, we should be able to create much higher than that. And they are not intended for long running CPU intensive operations. Okay, so wherever there is some logical thing, you should always go with platform thread, you should not use virtual thread in that case. And we already use this of virtual dot name dot start then runnable. And we can also use thread builder here. So you can create thread builder. And in the last video, we already saw the thread local concept, right? It is possible to use same concept in this virtual thread also so that each virtual thread can have its own copy of a uh, thread uh, local variables. And you can also use executor service here. And same thing is available for platform thread also only the method name will be different new virtual thread per task executor. So here you see like thread local variables. So virtual thread support thread local and inheritable thread local that we saw in the last video of this playlist. So it's same like platform threads. So they can run existing code that uses thread locals also. And if I see speed here, right? So they do not run code faster than, than any platform thread. They exist to provide scale, not speed. Please, you really have to remember this point here. So let's see if it's completed. So yeah, so if you see here, over 10 million threads were completed on my system, right? With no out of memory error or anything error, right? So it's really lightweight if you can see. So if we see the internal architecture, right? So this is how it will look like inside operating system, we have platform thread and inside JVM, we have carrier thread, right? And whenever you create the platform thread, it will need some resources from the CPU. Approximately 2 MB to 10 MB is needed by the platform thread. But with the help of virtual thread, so it can be handled at the JVM level, not at the operating system level. So this carrier thread can control all these virtual threads internally so that it is not asking for too much uh, memory space from CPU. And whenever the virtual threads are waiting for the result from API or database or file, right? So that time the control will be transferred to the other virtual thread so that till the time the result is coming so they can execute other virtual threads and when the result is there it will again pulled in in by the carrier thread so this is how it works internally due to which uh, they are able to handle a lot of virtual threads inside one jvm and again we can go through these points like virtual threads have a shallow call stack right because they are only used for operations like API call or query call virtual threads are not meant for heavy operations and single JVM might support millions of virtual threads that we already saw in the code earlier. So they are not intended for long running CPU intensive operations and you can use these threads like in high throughput concurrent applications like where you are fetching the data from multiple places and you know it is taking a lot of time waiting and again the final point is like they're not faster so they are there to provide scale higher throughput but not speed so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content